Hey friends, it's Natalia and welcome back to She Makes 31. I'm so excited to share today's video because it's the long awaited dining room table makeover. We purchased this pedestal table off of Facebook Marketplace for only $40. It was in really bad, terrible shape, but I can't wait for you to see the finished product. It's night and day guys. This table was originally painted and I wanted to strip it down to its bare wood. So I got this stripping paste, a chip brush, a plastic scraper, you're gonna need some chemical gloves, and then also some stretch wrap. The paint was literally just scraping away very easily. If you saw the before shots, I could scrape the paint off with my nails. It was in bad shape. Um, I know that you can decide to sand the paint off, but I knew that this was a veneer top and I didn't want to risk sanding through the veneer top. So I know that for veneer, it's safest to use stripper. I applied the paint stripper with a chip brush and then after that I put saran wrap on top. This actually prevents it from drying out. You want to leave this on for at least 30 minutes. I actually left it on overnight. I don't recommend that because it was a little too long and it had dried off a bit so it made it harder to scrape off. But um, after the allotted time you take off the plastic and you go ahead with your scraper and just start scraping off the paint. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Natalia and I'm a mom to three boys and I'm a wife. We live in South Florida and I love making videos like this, whether it be furniture makeovers, room makeovers, decorating DIYs. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more content like this. After you've removed a lot of this paint to clean up, you want to use mineral spirits. This actually makes it so that the stripper stops working, it deactivates it. I used a steel wool, a fine steel wool sponge to go ahead and get into the nooks and crannies and just make sure that you're getting all of the sludge off. Another helpful tool here is a wire brush. This works great, especially for the apron, the bottom part of the table. It gets into all those little nooks and crannies, the fine lines of your table, and just scrapes off all the paint without really scratching or ruining your wood. Here I'm going to show you a real time shot of how long it takes to do this.
blue shop towels or any lint free cloth will work really well to rinse off this paint stripper. All right, this is it for tonight for me. I got the majority of the paint off. Tomorrow, once this is um, drier, I will go ahead and lightly sand the top once the wood is dry. So I'm putting this, doesn't fit this way, so I'm putting it in an angle. Oh, okay. That's it. All right, friends, it is the next day and I cleaned off the table with the mineral spirits and here's what I found out about this table. So the top is a wood veneer, which is like a really thin um, sheet of wood that's put usually above like a least expensive wood. Um, which in this case is shown right here on the border here. It's MDF, which stands for uh, medium density fiberboard. This, as you can see, it does not have a grain to it. Okay, so this down here, the apron of the table does have a veneer. You see the wood grain here. So this is able to be stained. This is able to be stained, but this, it's pretty difficult to get stained. The good news is that I do like the color. I'm actually, I was actually aiming for a color like this for the whole tabletop. So my plan is going to be to stain the top to match as close as possible to this color. And then I can add my clear coat afterwards. Um, the bad news is for the pedestal here, um, I did a little bit of test sanding. And I thought I was in luck because I saw wood grain and I was very excited because I could stain that. But then I started down here and over here, no wood grain, meaning this is all MDF. So I have to change up my plans because this will definitely be a lot harder to get evenly stained. It's a big chunk. It's not like a, you know, a little piece here or there. Um, so I am going to have to end up painting this the same color as my dining room chairs. So change of plans, but still something that's going to look really nice and better, definitely better than it did before. Okay, so a little further explanation on the MDF. Like this is the tabletop, um, the base. And as you can see here, you can see wood grain on top. But look here, you can see all these little layers, okay? So there's usually a layer of uh, veneer and then a layer of the MDF, veneer, MDF. So that's probably how this whole thing is configured. I, I'm thinking this round piece though is probably MDF just cause it's, you know, such a big piece. There were some small chips on the veneer that I wanted to go ahead and patch up. So I tinted this wood filler to match the stain color that I was aiming for. I just stabbed this on with my finger because they were small spots. If you have larger spots, you can also use a plastic scraper.
After the wood patches were completely dry, it was time to start sanding. I started off with 150 grit sandpaper. You wanna make sure that you sand with the grain of the wood. So this will also remove any little leftover paint or anything like that stain if you have stain. Um, and then after that, you're gonna use a 220 grit sandpaper, which is a very fine grit sandpaper and this gives it a really smooth feel so that you have a really smooth tabletop. I did the same with the apron. I used this little tool which was very helpful and I used the same grit that I used for the tabletop starting off with the 150 and then moving up to the 220. After sanding, I made sure I wiped the table down using a tack cloth. I didn't film that, um, but it is a very important step. And then I went on to use some pre-stain wood conditioner. This is so important, especially for a veneer top. Um, veneer tends to just be hard to stain in the sense that it comes off very splotchy. If you don't use this uh, pre stain wood conditioner your job will come out splotchy and it, you know you're going to put in all this work you might as well make it look right and do it the right way so after you apply this i believe you let it sit for about 10 minutes and then any excess you wipe down with a lint free cloth FYI, the pre-stain wood conditioner is a clear um, coat, so it looks like I'm adding color, but I'm not. This is just what the natural grain of the wood looks like when it's wet. Um, so you let that sit, you wipe it off. I will link as many of the items that I've used in this video in the description box below. Now that the table is ready to be stained, I went ahead and got this gel stain in Golden Oak by Verithane. Gel stain is ideal for veneer. Um, it makes sure it's thicker. It's not like regular stain that's watery. This is kind of a little bit more of a paste consistency to it. Um, and this makes sure that it, you have an even application. Just like the pre-stained wood conditioner, this also helps to give a more even coat. I went ahead and used a lint-free cloth to apply this. For the apron of the table, I found it easier to use a chip brush to apply the gel stain. Next, I used a second coat of stain with white wash. I wasn't too happy with the golden oak color. I felt like it gave the wood more of an orangey color. So I think that this white wash was perfect because it toned down the oranginess. I here showed you in real time how I apply this. I did very small sections and I wiped it off pretty much right away. So you wanna work in small sections. This white wash, it can, you know, be very prominent so i didn't want that so i just wanted it to take away some of the orangey yellowiness of the wood so right after i brushed it on with a chip brush i went ahead and wiped it off and this is all trial and error when it comes to the stain color I have actually done another table makeover and used the golden oak and I loved it there um, but it just wasn't going with this wood so I think the whitewash gave it a little bit more of a, like a farmhouse vibe also so I really like that. And yes, guys, a third stain color. This time it was regular stain in special walnut. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of that whiteness away and just darken it up a little bit. Um, the white still shows through in like the wood grain, which is really nice. Um, but this color just toned it down a little bit, made it, I don't know, I just love the color. I, it's, it's exactly what I was looking for. 
So, you know, it, it is a little bit of an adventure, you know, trying to figure out what stain colors you can use a test um, a piece of wood, but it's kind of hard sometimes because you don't know exactly what wood you're dealing with and your sample piece has to be the same kind of wood. So, you know, it's, you just pray and hope for the best, right? <laughs> While the tabletop was drying, I went ahead and started working on the pedestal. First things first, you gotta clean it, get all that dirt off. And then all the flat surfaces, I used my electric sander. I wanted to get as much of the bare wood um, out as possible. That way the paint would adhere really, really well. And for the other areas, I scuff sanded it. And then of course you use your um, tack cloth to wipe it down afterwards to remove any dust. Priming is also very important. I use this flat gray primer um, and I got this attachment to make it very easy to spray and not cause like fatigue on your fingers so much when you're spray painting. And it works a lot like a spray gun, so I thought that was great. For the top coat, I used some Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer in the satin finish. The color is Canyon Black. Um, you want to do a light first coat of this and the motion that you want to use is going from side to side. Um, it gives you the most even finish. You don't want to do excessive coats or thick coats. It'll make it so that there's drips and things like that. After that coat had fully dried, I went ahead with some 600 grit sandpaper, which is very, very fine, um, and went ahead and scuff sanded the paint between the coats. Um, so if you did end up having a little drip here or there, um, this will help eliminate that and it also will help to make that other coat stick. You wanna use this in like a fanning motion. You pull the trigger you, before you actually hit the furniture and you finish it after you've gone past the furniture. I hope that makes sense. Um, you don't wanna start spraying when you're on the furniture because that's how you get the drips where too much comes off. So you start off basically spraying into the air and then going along through the furniture and past the furniture into the air again and back and forth. So left, right, left, right. Now it was time to top coat. I got this Verithane polyurethane and my Home Right Super Finish Max Paint Sprayer. I love this thing, guys. It is amazing. And Home Right did send it to me. They were very generous when I asked, and I've been using it for multiple projects. I went ahead and mixed the polyurethane with a stir stick. You wanna make sure you don't shake it because it will cause air bubbles in your finish. You can apply your top coat by hand with a paintbrush, but I just love the just professional look that a paint sprayer can give you. I went ahead and turned the nozzle here um, because I had it in the wrong direction, but this is so easy to work with. I had really no experience with paint sprayers. This one is so user-friendly that I found it very easy to just get the hang of quickly. You always wanna do a test spray before you apply to your actual surface to get the right consistency. I wanted to have a really fine mist, so I did have to adjust the dial a little bit until I got that result. One thing I did learn is that when you are top coating, you wanna go very quickly. If you take your time, you will get really big drips and things like that. So you go very fast and do the same motion that I explained earlier and just fanning it out and going past the furniture, a little overspray. That way you get even coats. All right, so I just applied that first coat. Very light, very quick. It does have a milky appearance when you first put it on, but don't worry, that will disappear. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry, sand it with some 220 grit sandpaper, and then apply my next coat. After the first coat was completely dried, I went ahead with some 320 grit sandpaper. I wrapped it around a sanding sponge and sanded the surface. This makes sure that you don't have any air bubbles, you know, if you have anything like a little drip here or there, or uh, brush marks, if you're using a brush, this will help eliminate them.
And to remove that sanding dust, here is my tack cloth. I went ahead and wiped it down before I went over to my second coat. I did a total of five coats. You don't sand the last coat though. did use a water-based polyurethane because it dries a lot quicker and it won't yellow over time. Now it was time to set this up in our dining room. We went ahead and switched out the light fixture to one that we had from our last house to just modernize the space a little bit. We actually leave this as a round table. It fits six chairs just perfectly and it allows for more room in our living room, but I do love that it has the option to have a leaf put into it. And soon I will be giving these dining room chairs a makeover to match the table. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you get notified when I post this video. All right, friends, here is the final reveal. hope you guys enjoyed this video and were inspired to start your own table makeovers thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one bye